Hello students, in the previous class we discussed the poem A Prayer for My Daughter. Today we will discuss the remaining part of that poem. May she become a flourishing hidden tree that all her thoughts may like the linnet be and have no business but dispensing round their magnanimities of sound nor but in merriment begin a chess, nor but in merriment a quarrel. O oh, may she live like some green laurel, rooted in one dear perpetual place. In this stanza, Yeats continues to talk about his hopes and expectations for his daughter. As she grew up, he wants her to be happy and content. He wants her to become a flourishing hidden tree and her thoughts like a linnet. Linnet is a kind of a bird, referring to its innocence and cheerfulness. Like a linnet, he wants her daughter to be satisfied in herself and infect others with her happiness. Further, he wants her to live like a laurel rooted in a particular place. The poet reveals his wish on his daughter being rooted in the tradition. Then the poet says, My mind because of the minds that I have loved, the sort of beauty that I have approved, prosper but little, had dried up of late, yet knows that to be choked with hate may well be of all evil chances chief, if there is no hatred in a mind, a salt and battery of the wind, can never tear the linnet from the leaf. It says that self-contentment in a woman is a rare quality. He believes that kind of self-content Traditionally rooted women are incorruptible. The poet considers hatred to be the cause of all evil and prays that hard to be left of that evil. Further, he believes that the soul free from hatred will preserve its innocence and hatred, just as the storm outside can tear leaves from sturdy trees turmoil and war cannot break a strong woman. Here Yeats refers to World War I. An intellectual hatred is the worst, so let her think. Opinions are accursed. Have I not seen the loveliest women born out of the mouth of Planetes horn because of her opinionated mind? Barter that haunts and every good by quite nature's understood or an old billows full of angry wind. In this stanza, the poet implores his daughter to shun passion and wild feelings that he considered as the weakness of beautiful women. She must be temperate because people who love deeply could hate deeply too. Hate destroys people and makes them do cruel things, especially intellectual hatred, which is worst of all kinds. The poet reflects upon his emotional state when Maud Garney rejected him to marry John McBride. He wants his daughter to experience neither the disappointment nor hatred. Yeats was very much hopeless after Maud Garney rejected him. These lines reflect those feelings. Considering that all hatred driven has, the soul recovers radical innocence and learns at last that it is self-delighting, self-appeasing, self-affrighting, 
and that its own sweet will is heaven's will. She can, though every face should scowl, and every windy quarter howl, or every billows bust the happy still. In this stanza, Yeats continues to describe the impact of hatred and the benefit of staying away from hatred. Once hatred is driven out, the soul could recover its innocence. Then the soul would be free to explore and find that it is self-delighting, self-appeasing and self-offrighting. According to the poet, the ideal woman makes everyone happy and comfortable despite all storms of misfortunes that come in her way. She is a stronghold for people around her and she, will, she would be that of heavens for she has a clear mind. The poet says in these lines that may his girl grow and flourish like a tree hidden away. May her thought be as tuneful as the song of a bird, rejoicing everyone around, getting into no arguments or silly pursuits, rooted and thriving in one place, like a laurel bush, happy to stay at home. By way of contrast, the poet's mind turns back to his own harsh experience. He has cultivated minds and sought out a kind of beauty that brought him only to hate the greatest of misfortunes. Whoever keeps no hatred within heart, he, she will never be disturbed by outside storms. Yeats recalls particularly the love of his life, love for Montgomery, without mentioning her name, who by spurning others' opinion and receiving hatred, pushing herself, and her opinions are everyone around. Fresh her splendid gifts. This is the last stanza of the poem. And may her bridegroom bring her to a house where all's accustomed ceremonious for arrogance and hatred are the wares. Paddle in the throw fairs, how but in custom and in ceremony are innocence and beauty born. Ceremony's name for the rich horn and custom for the spreading laurel tree. In this stanza, the poet expresses his final wish. He prays that his daughter to be married to a good husband who takes her to a home with the aristocratic values and tradition. There, he believes that neither arrogance nor, nor hatred of common folks could be found but morality and purity. Further, the poet does not want her to live a distant life. He concludes by stating that his daughter would be rooted in spiritual values like a laurel tree. So we can say that the poet prays for his daughter that let his daughter drive out hate and she will discover all joy Peace and fear arise only from inside of herself, and heaven will, heaven will be with her. Then, whatever all men disturb, storms roar, or all anger burst upon her, but still she will be happy, and when she marries, he wishes her to keep all pride and anger out of her home, and foster there what custom and ceremony. So, Yeats says that her daughter should be without any pride and without any kind of hatred for anybody. Thank you.